Lotus Village is designed to be a model for the future, incorporating evidence-based best practices, a wide range of supportive services and resources, tools and education to help women and children heal, and to build a, a solid foundation for the future. We, we grow, grow food at Lotus House, House in Miami, Florida. Florida. My name is Jackie Roth. My background is in neuroscience and nutrition education. Lotus House is a holistic residential facility for women, youth, and children experiencing homelessness. We serve almost 500 people on a daily basis, almost half of whom are children, mostly under the age of six. We try to provide every service that guests could possibly need during their stay here. My name is Constance Collins and I am the founder and executive director of the Lotus House Women's Shelter. Our primary goal in establishing the farm in Lotus Village was to create a unique, enriching, educational science lab for our children. To bring transparency to the process of raising our own food. We know that hunger and food insecurity are normative in the lives of the women and children sheltered here at Lotus House before they arrive. We actually conducted a pilot study before we launched the farm of uh, approximately half of the women and children here in the shelter to ask what food options were available to them before they entered the shelter. What we learned is that nearly all ran out of money in the month before they arrived to purchase food, that many had no options other than highly processed, high fat, sugary foods available in local corner markets or at fast food restaurants because they were experiencing homelessness and they lacked the resources to purchase fresh vegetables and fruit. So one of the things that we felt was critical about the farm was to supplement the food that we offered here at the shelter with the kinds of fresh fruit and vegetables that they would not have had access to otherwise. People who don't have access to fresh produce, whole grains, any fresh food, things like that, are definitely going to be deficient in a lot of critical nutrients for growth and development. And that can cause a bunch of different problems as far as uh, stunted development, behavioral issues, learning problems. People who, especially children, who don't have consistent access to healthy food are gonna have trouble focusing in school. If they're hungry all day, they can't really think about anything else. The farm kind of has a dual purpose of providing fresh greens and fresh vegetables and fresh produce to the kitchen, but also as an enriching educational program for children. Before we even received our greenery and launched our farm program, we actually went through a pretty rigorous process designing an evidence-based curriculum for the entire program that would fit the needs, the special needs of the children that were sheltering here. Um, so we found throughout that process that the more layers of intervention, the more effective it will be, basically. So not only are they farming and doing different types of activities in the farm, but they're also doing cooking classes. They're also seeing it served, different ways to prepare it. They're learning different facts about nutrition and eating healthy through the farm stand and other kind of educational, informational types of engagement. An average day in the farm, usually I'll have a few kids at a time with me, mixed ages, usually for an hour or two at a time, either planting seeds, transplanting sprouts, or harvesting the lettuce. And the farm has kind of continued to expand into a whole gardening and nutrition initiative at the shelter. So in addition to the greenery, we also have other outdoor gardens. We have a rooftop urban garden where we can grow other tropical fruits, fruit and crops that wouldn't fit inside the greenery. So it's really become this multi-dimensional, all-encompassing health and wellness program for kids at the shelter. The first time I went into the garden, it was just a whole bunch of seeds, so we really didn't have any like things sprouting, but it was just learning the water cycle and like the temperature changes. All the kids enjoy it because it's something new that they never learned before. It's just so much fresher here, and it's a fun experience to be with friends. And just to farm and work here all together, you can like really tell that we put a lot of heart into it. 
the farm's technology is understandable and uh, easily mastered on so many levels by our children and youth. It becomes part of the normal educational process here of growing food. And uh, while, of course, they may not understand all the details that underlie the technology, they can learn about and appreciate the basics. We have had gardens of varying sorts since the beginning of the shelter. We recognize the importance and value of uh, growing our own food to healing. But given the Miami climate, that's really a seasonal effort. And uh, what we found with the farm was that it could be a year-round, extremely productive growing effort here that enabled us to actually feed the farm, not just as a novelty or an interesting experiment, but to actually provide substantive input for our daily meals here. We take it directly to our kitchen, 100 feet from the door of the greenery, and they pass it on to the chef. Uh, the kitchen will then clean and prepare it and serve it in the pavilion during mealtime hours. Um, a lot of times kids are actually involved in that serving process. They get to wear their aprons and chef's hats and dish the salads out to guests that they helped grow. Once a week we do our cooking classes, so we try to involve produce that we've grown ourselves and harvested ourselves ourselves whenever we possibly can. Definitely lots of herbs. We grow a lot of basil. We've made a lot of pesto pasta, which the kids love. So I've seen guests come in who, who would never have eaten lettuce before unless it was iceberg or something non-nutritional or no nutritional value um, and not know how to pick, plant, do anything in a garden and fall in love with it. And we only, we only plant high nutrient dense lettuces rather than serving iceberg you could buy in the store or romaine you could buy in the store. In general, what we grow is more nutrient dense greens. The texture is definitely superior to a lot of the lettuce that you can buy retail. Uh, the, the taste is much stronger in a good way. Um, you can taste the difference between the romaine and the bok choy and the sorrel uh, rather than it just tasting like a plain crunchy piece of iceberg lettuce. Serving fresh food, uh, gardening interventions, nutrition education interventions are more impactful the more layers of engagement you add basically. So uh, not only do we have the food served here through the classes, through the kitchen, uh, through cooking classes, all of that, um, but we also use a lot of kind of public facing engagement tools. When the farm stand gets rolled out into the lobby and the children are wearing their farm aprons and beaming as they hand out samples of what they're growing to guests coming through the lobby, uh, it's pretty irresistible. Uh, you can't say no. And it's a way to introduce all of the guests here in the shelter and the staff to uh, new tastes and uh, new experiences with leafy green vegetables, the edible flowers and uh, herbs that they're growing. How we feed ourselves, how we nurture our bodies, minds and spirits is just as important. Unprocessed meals, homemade, made with love. And in the case of the farm, to provide a safe, holistic, supportive environment for them to heal, reclaim their lives, and build the foundation for a new future.